about Kimbo, uh, we might think about why it's so destructive, and we can find many answers. In fact, many may think that speed is the most important thing, or power in each movement, or you know, maybe the capacity of breaking through the enemies from a high or the enemies hard. But the fact is that what makes Kempo so dangerous and so malicious actually is not just one thing. And each of these things must be well broken down, actually uh, well fragmented and studied. And uh, in the Blink Sequence, for example, uh, many see some techniques or some sequences of Kempo and they might think that, well, that might be seen as something fast. And because it's fast, it could be powerful, it could hurt. But this is not true. Uh, if we have, of course, Newton proved that, you know, according to physics laws, that uh, if a body, if a mass, you know, if it has, um, uh, actually, if this mass has some kind of acceleration, it also has force, and uh, this force could somehow you know, um, do some kind of work. However. Let me take you know, all this scenario and, and we bring this to uh, we say a fight or a practice, a study, or something which involves bodies, you know, human bodies and biomechanics. You know, this could be uh, a bit more well approached. For example, I could be as fast as I could be, you know, in you know, touching him, for, for example. And one could, uh, and one could think that this, this could be fast and because it's fast, it could hurt him. But even if I touch him, it has no power. So moving the body, taking a, a part of your body member apart, and reaching him, it's just a part of our deal. And actually, it says nothing yet about collision, about after you touch. So once, once I'm here, how am I supposed to, uh, you know, to bring forth or to convey the power in a way that you know, would fulfill what one intends to do. This is another matter yet. And uh, this is actually one of the most interesting points you know, in the discussion whether uh, one, should, one should practice you know, just a light, uh, light movements, like not touching at all, and others say, oh, if you want to, to stay the, the real thing, you should go to the, the full contact kind of movements. Well, each of them has its own uh, pros and cons, but uh, for the matter of Kempo and for our, our general overview, uh, it's a very interesting point. Other thing that people see is that um, Kempo doesn't stop at all. Once it starts, it won't stop. It won't stop when he's been knocked out, it doesn't stop when he's down on the floor, it doesn't stop ever, actually, you know, until you have uh, an enemy completely out of action. So you see, being able to hit him quickly you know, doesn't mean that you can hit him precisely. So uh, if one is attempting to do it very quickly, you want to have a powerful technique, that's interesting. But one should know that, one should be aware that the, the most important thing is being able to defend your body exactly where you want to and being able to attack him you know, before at the same time or after he is attacking you precisely where you want to. And uh, for all that, there are many exercises. But for instance, and for each target. One should see that you know, there is an angle of attack which should match precisely what you want to do. So, there is no need. Is that it makes it up ski and 
once we get in, means we break through his Baha'i, uh, one doesn't stop at all. So, and for that too, there are exercises which show uh, how to keep attacking, you know, precisely and in a um, very logical and meaningful order, which allows you to you know, keep your track and keep your your body always protected. So his arms like this. So for the sake, he's like this. And suppose he's you know, walking backward, and, and we should be able to attack him wherever we would like to between his movements. And one more thing we can see in Campbell, of course, people always know, they say no, that in ancient times, masters could practice so hard and, and no, uh, harden their body so much, their arms you know, and uh, their, their legs, their, their shins actually, they would make them so tough and so hard. Uh, they would also here you know, make your arms and legs like steel and uh, you know, have the power to break, to attempt to break bones, you know, to break hard parts of his body too. And, uh, but you know, despite that fact, uh, people also see uh, movements in Campbell which are uh, always precise. And something dangerous in Campbell is that it, it shows, it teaches you how to move, you know, between or within his own movements. So, for example, so for instance, if he tries to punch with this head, you know. And now he tries to punch with this hand and with the other hand and with this hand and now the other hand and the other hand uh, always moving with the arms tight or with the arms together and uh, not waiting for the next movement so learning how to move between his movements is a, uh, a great secret in Campbell and for that there are exercises too.